All right, take your snowflakes to the next level. And it has a lot of steps in it, so you really wanna pay attention closely to what those steps are. First of all, we're gonna create a new file. And this particular design is gonna be a 12 inch tile once we print it up. So um, what we wanna make sure is to set it at 12 inches. And if it's something else, you can just change it to inches on there by 12 inches. And then the other thing to pay attention to is that number 300. It's a higher resolution, which is what you want when creating print imagery. So 300 pixels per inch um, is great for a good print that's gonna end up being 12 inches by 12 inches. Color mode, RGB color is totally fine for this. And we're just gonna click create. Okay, the first thing that you need to do is figure out what kind of um, Saxon phrase you want or um, what kind of word that you want to incorporate into your design and you're going to choose the type tool the horizontal type tool if it's something else i guess you could do that but for uh, this particular project this tutorial i'm gonna, just going to choose um, the horizontal type with black being my color that i choose uh, to start out with so i'm going to click on the workspace um, and again, you can change the type uh, font to be whatever you want. Uh, Saxon Strong to start out with. Um, now, you're going to want to resize your word or words uh, to be roughly about a third of the distance across. Um, that'll give you a little bit of wiggle room for creating the center of your uh, snowflake. And you'll see that later as we start to transform okay but what we're going to do first is to transform so i'm going to press command t and that brings up that option uh, and i'm going to shrink it down just a little bit so it's about a third of the way across the square here and i'll press return to set that then what i'm going to do is to duplicate that layer so i'll go to the saxon strong layer and just drag it down on top of new layer and now I've got two Saxon Strongs. Um, however, I would like for them to not be um, facing the same direction. So I'm gonna go up to edit and choose transform and I'm going to flip it vertically. So now I've got a mirror image here and it looks like they're lined up as well. Um, so I'm going to merge those together uh, but before I do that, I have to actually rasterize the type. Um, so right now you can still edit the type, but once you rasterize it, it just becomes uh, just like any other pixel object in there. So I selected both of those layers, choosing right click and choose rasterize type. Now I can merge those layers together. So now it's one layer. Okay, and I can move that around just like so. Now, what I want to do for this part is to make the first part of the word um, shrunken down a little bit um, as if it's uh, almost coming to a point. And the reason for that is that'll just kind of tie into the, the snowflake, um, how I'd like to do that. Um, and so the way that I can do that is go up to edit and I'll scroll down to perspective warp. Um, and it'll say step one of two, which is click and drag and define the planes. So I'm just going to click and drag this grid across the entire shape that I want to um, change. And then at the top, you'll notice that there's a layout view and then a warp view. And so when I select warp, now I'm able to actually change these to get the, so that the, um, the Saxon, the word Saxon is a little bit smaller than the word strong. And this tool can actually be used in a lot of different ways. We're just using it this way for this. Then I'll click check on there. So now I've got narrow going to wider. I'm going to duplicate this layer. And you can see it is right there, right? So what I want to do is to flip it, edit, transform, flip horizontal, 
All right, now this is where I'm going to bring this fairly far across the screen. I want a little bit of space on the outside uh, and space on the inside. And you can see as I move, um, the little guidelines show up. Um, the guides, smart guides, uh, reveal that it is actually aligned together. And then I'm going to again merge down. So now those are in one layer. Then, now this is where we start building the, the arms of the snowflake. Um, and so we want to do, <clears throat> excuse me, we want to do this in 60 degree increments. So we want to repeat this layer um, in 60 degree increments. So it, it comes off. So what I'm going to do is choose Saxon Strong Copy in the Layers. And I'm going to drag it down to the new layer. Then I'm going to go up to Edit. Um, and I'm going to go to Rotate. Um, and then up here you'll notice a bunch of different numbers. I'm just going to, in this area that looks like a little angle, uh, like a geometry corner in a triangle, how you would find the percentage or the, um, the degrees, that's exactly what you're doing there. You're typing in the degrees. I'm just going to type 60. And I will commit that. Okay. Now with that same layer selected, I'm going to duplicate it. And so I go down, add a new layer. Then I go up to Edit, Transform, Rotate, and I choose 60 again. And commit it. OK, so now I've got my basic snowflake laid out. right? Um, and what I want to do here then is to merge all of these into one layer. So I'll simply press Shift while I click on the top and the bottom, and that selects all of those, and then I can just merge the layers together. Okay, so we've got now two layers, the background layer and the Saxon Strong copy layer. Um, and from this point, I can move this around and see where it gets centered. Uh, looks like not all the guidelines are showing up. Uh, so I could do that. Um, and then I'm going to use what I know how to do when making snowflakes, which is switch to a brush and turn on symmetry and choose mandala. OK, and then when you do that, you get the option for segments and count six segments. Click OK. Um, and then you can align that. Actually, if you want to press shift while dragging the corner, um, it'll end up aligning it just perfectly so you can figure out where exactly the center point is. Because you want everything being um, radiating off the center there. Um, once you've done that, you could, um, of course, go back to, to that or keep it where it was at. OK, so now we're back in line. Um, key idea here is that you need to add an extra layer. Okay, so you want these to be in different layers. And I'm just pressing shift while I click um, to make it uh, looks good. Uh, just to make those lines really straight. Um, for this one, I kind of want more of a geometric feel to it instead of organic. I think we're going to call that good. OK, so now I've got three separate layers, the background layer, the Saxon Strong Snowflake, and then the layer with my drawn snowflake. So from this point, you can just apply a whole bunch of different um, effects to it. Uh, so for instance, if you want the background to be a certain color, um, you could choose that color. So maybe I want it to be, I don't know, like a light blue. Click OK. And then I'll use my paint bucket and select that. OK, but now maybe I want the snowflake itself to be more of a pink or something like that. And I'll click there, and that fills that up. OK, and then maybe I want to change the Saxon Strong. 
um, from being just solid black. So what I can do is add a layer over it, um, adjustment layer. I'm going to choose gradient for this one. Um, I'm going to choose radial. So it's going to be radiating out from the center. Um, and then I'm going to choose a couple of different colors. Let's uh, let's see what might look kind of cool. I mean, those are kind of the stock. I think they're cool, but I think it will be uh, probably too much. So I'm going to change the colors a little bit. I'm going to put a um, double click on this square here. Um, and I can choose another color there. So maybe make that part blue. Um, click this part and I wonder why that's oh, we'll just see this okay maybe go to yellow okay and I think what we have here is the opacity has been turned down so we'll put it up at 100 and click okay and okay so from here obviously I'm hiding the layers below it so what I want to do is clip this gradient layer to the Saxon Strong layer. So I'll right click, choose Create Clipping Mask, and now there's a bit of a gradient overlay on that. Um, from here, I, I can do a bunch of different things. I could leave it as it is if I wanted to, um, or maybe go ahead and have a little bit more fun with it. So I'm going to choose Layer 1, I'm going to right click and choose Blending Options. Um, and I want to play around a little bit with bevel and emboss, see what happens. Um, on this, in order to make more contrast, I might want to um, add a stroke around those letters. So I can choose blending options and choose stroke. And it creates a stroke on there. And depending on how strong of a stroke it is, it'll have some sort of effect on it. Click OK. So that, in essence, is how you make a Saxon snowflake. Uh, certainly not the only way to do it. Um, just one of a myriad of ways. But that should at least give you an idea of how to create a 12-inch by 12-inch tile for this design.